Hello everyone. I am Nivinita Jena from Ambika Prasad Research Foundation. Welcome to all of you to our channel, Biodiversity and Conservation. Today we are going to learn about the predation, types of predation and the factors influencing the success of a predator. So what is predation? The term predation is used to describe an interaction between populations in which one organism, the predator feeds on its prey. Typically, the predator catches, kills, and eats its prey. But predation is sometimes also used to describe feeding by insectivorous plants and even grazing by herbivores. The term predation is, however, more commonly associated with the idea of the strong attack, the weak like the tiger pouncing on the deer the hawk on sparrow, the frog on insects, and the snake on mouse, etc. In natural communities, predation is a step in the transfer of energy. It is a negative interaction which results in negative effects on the growth and survival of one of the two species population. From the viewpoint of community ecology, predation is important in very many ways and has definitive roles to play in food coactions, productivity, and regulation of population size. Predators, for example, may help increase the biodiversity of communities by preventing a single species from becoming dominant. Such predators are known as keystone species and may have a profound influence on the balance of organisms in a particular ecosystem. Introduction or removal of this predator or changes in its population density can have drastic cascading effects on the equilibrium of many other populations in the ecosystem. The generalized and specialized predators, by their hunting activities, predators can be regarded as specialized or generalized. So, specialized predators are those adapted to hunt only a few species. They are forced to move where the vulnerability of obstacle prey items drops to a point where the predator population cannot support itself. For example, Pell's flag falcon shows a marked preference for dogs and pheasants. And the generalized predators, not so restricted in diet, are just to other food sources. For example, the horn owl and buttered hawk have a large range of collective prey available. Foxes can shift to vegetable and uh, carrion diet should so conditions require it.
So let's discuss about the factor influencing the success of a predator. The act of predation can be broken down into a maximum of four stages. Detection of prey, attack, capture and finally consumption. While successful predation results in a gain of energy, hunting invariably involves energetic cost as well. When hunger is not an issue, most predators will generally not seek to attack prey since the cost outweigh the benefits. The factors which influence the success of a predator are listed like hunting ability and success of predator involve the development of a searching image on the part uh, of the predator. Once it has secured a palatable item of prey, the predator finds it uh, progressively easier to find others of the same kind. The searching rate of predator is influenced by the speed of the predator relative to the speed and escape reactions of the prey. To the distance at which the predator first notices and attack the prey and to the proportion of attacks that result in successful capture. Habitat preference or overlapping territories can bring predator and prey close to contact, increasing prey risk. For example, predatory rainbow trout in Paul Lake, British Columbia, mops into the soles when their prey, the red side cyanide, are most heavily concentrated there. Then the factors influencing prey risk, like the predators, the prey has its defensive specializations. The prey risk is influenced by some factors like density of prey population, availability of food and protective cover, human activity habits of the prey, and size, age, strength, and escape reaction of prey. Then coming to the predator prey oscillations. The first ecologist to model predator prey interactions mathematically were Alfred Lothka and uh, Vaito Volterra. Both researchers built their models based on observations of interactions among natural populations. Lothka was impressed by the reciprocal oscillations of populations of moth and the butterfly larva and the parasitoids that attack them. Colterra was inspired by the response of marine fish populations to cessation of fishing during World War I, and Volterra observed that the response of fish populations was uneven. Predaceous fish, particularly sharks, increased in abundance while the populations upon which they feed decreased. This reciprocal change in numbers suggested that predators have the potential to reduce the abundance of their prey. In this single observation, Volterra somehow saw the potential for predator prey population cycles and suggested that similar cycles should occur in parasite host and pathogen host systems, including those in which humans are involved. With these observations in mind, 
Lotka and Volterra then set out to build mathematical models that would produce the cycles that they thought occurred in nature. And uh, they wrote a simple pair of prediction equations like dn1 divided by dt is equal to r1 n1 minus p1 n1 n2. And the same for the n2, where n1 is pre population density, n2 is population density of the predator, r1 is the instantaneous rate of increase of the pre population per head, d2 is the death rate of the predator population, p1 and p2 are predation constants, p1 n1 represents the functional response. Describing the conjunction response of individual predators to changes in prey density, a constant in these simple equations. And the P2N1 represents the numerical response describing the way in which prey are converted into new predator individuals. Thank you.